when I was told, well, you're going to Russia. I was like, well, Russia? Like the, the only picture I had about Russia was the Hollywood picture, what we always watched in movies. I was like, it's probably a lot of gangsters. It's very cold. That's all I knew. No one knew English. So my first day came here and uh, even at the airport with the immigration guys, mm-hmm. absolutely no one knew English. All right, speak a next line in, in your Russian. Like say, I... When I when I get to I, when I got to Russia, I said doing aviation just to that line. No, когда я приехал в Россию, начинал сделать авиацию. Oh. Mujevale, mujevale, mujevale. My name is Bani Kibuka, and welcome to another episode of the Ugandan Ball Talk Show. Uh, welcome back to a new episode on the Ugandan Boy Talk Show. Uh, like I said last week, that I'm going to start uh, talking a little bit before the new episode drops um, because I like it and I like to give you guys updates on what's going on in the podcast. And I feel like that will give me um, an involvement on the podcast. And like I said, there are some events that will happen that I would want to put out on the podcast so you you know what's going on other than just dropping the pre-recorded um, episodes where I don't get a chance to involve what's going on with the podcast. Um, it brings me joy and happiness that I can still sit back the microphone and talk about stories, bring incredible stories and host people, talk about stories. That when I tell people about my podcast, like everybody's like, wow, that's so cool. But not only that, that makes me happy. I love it myself. Like I love every time I could, I could sit around, I could sit back the mic and just talk. And I keep saying, like, it brings a lot of opportunities. And that's one thing I'm going to share about today before we get into today's episode. Um, most of you who follow me on my social media, you might have seen an email that I got from my work uh, because apparently the heads, the, like the CEO heads people or like the higher up, I don't know, that's whoever is on my boss my employers or something like that um so they found out i do a podcast and one of the episodes episode 56 i talk about my transition from my old job to the new one that i got and this happens to be my new job so i i was just talking i was just talking my head out like i usually do just to bring these stories out to just share it and i shared about my experience and what i felt from this new job that where i work which is amazing. And I'm not paid to say this. Nobody paid me to say this, but my job is amazing in all ways. Um, Me getting better as a person, being in a healthier environment. And so, yeah, that's going to be a different story that I'm going to talk about. But what I wanted to say is like, they listened to that and they were like, oh, Bonnie, we loved your story that you shared about your new job or your experience. And we want to build onto that. So, they actually want me to share that story to help out other people out there in the field that are looking for jobs, people who want to go somewhere. But even even if you're not looking for a job, like when you listen to what I had to go through, no matter what career you're going, you're into, like the same things I went through or the same things are going to apply to your career. So it will be helpful to everybody. So my job asked me to answer a few questions and record that. I might record some of it and I'll share with you on the podcast here after I'm done with that. And that's an opportunity just to get out of there and people knowing that you do a podcast, people hearing your voice. It's everything that happens is an opportunity. But anyway, today is not about that. But I just want to let you guys know about the good news that's happening with the podcast and some great opportunities are coming up. Last week, I shared the opportunity that I've been putting out the information about kids who want to get to go back to school and i've been putting it out through the podcast and there are people who have come out to help these kids go to school and that gets me excited about my podcast that's one of the questions i ask my guests here and actually today i ask them what gets you excited about life but what gets me excited about life is like to see my podcast bringing opportunities to me, bringing opportunities to my people, especially the people back in Uganda, bringing joy and happiness to people. People are texting you like, hey, man, I, I I learn a lot because the problems that people share on the podcast help me reevaluate myself to see what I can be thankful for that I don't have. So little things like that get me excited. But anyway, 
I'm going to have an episode sometime next in the coming weeks to talk about my job and the opportunities that I got. I just want to give you a glimpse of that. But be, without wasting time, uh, today I got a good episode for you guys. Um, one of my friends, Ryan, um, he's living in Russia. You all know what's going on with Russia. Um, so we, we pray for him and you all know what's going on with Russia and Ukraine. The whole things are gone that I don't know about, which um, I just hosted this guy who is living in Russia right now. He's from Uganda. And he's on the pursuits to do aviation, just like I did. A lot of people have been asking me questions about aviation, like how how did you get to aviation? How did you realize you wanted to go to America to do aviation? And so I felt like I need to host this guy to share his journey on aviation. And he happens to do it in Russia. And he shares about what's happening to his life in Russia, how it's that going on. So I want you guys to tune in and listen to this. So... Here we go. Let's jump into uh, Ryan's episode. So, Ryan, welcome Thanks, to my man. podcast, man. Thank you, bro. Thanks for inviting me, and I'm I'm glad to be here. Yeah, I yeah, I was like, I need to have this guy on the podcast. But before even like the podcast, how how did we even end up getting connected? Was it through Sema Semakola? Well, how did we get connected? Yeah, through through Isaac Semakola Isaac. Isaac. How do you know Isaac? No. Well, I went I went to school with Sir Makola. We went okay. to the same school. So we went to Chiwili together and he's been my okay. friend since. Yeah. So yeah I'm probably I... something tells me, well, yeah. I know some guy who does the same thing you're trying to get into. Right. And he's close to me. I was like, give me his contact, let's get in touch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's when he gave me, I think, your Instagram. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Then then I texted you. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually that's the whole reason why we're gonna have a conversation about that, about your journey and when when you realize that you wanted to do aviation. But before we go into that, that's why I wanted first to just uh remember how we got connected. Cause I know you've been on my social media, you've been we've been friends for a long time. You when something happens yeah. to me, I post on Instagram, you're like, hey, congratulations, brother. And like when I said the podcast, like you were always there supporting, I was like, hey. This is good. This is great. Yeah, this is yeah. great. So we've been friends yeah. and I've never had you on the podcast. But the other day, somebody sent me a, a message and they were like, hey, we see you do aviation. You do all this stuff. Like, would you talk about your journey and um, how you got into it? And I was like, who is the best person to have to talk about this than Ryan? And just like you sharing your okay. journey on a- aviation. And that's why I hit you up. I was like, hey, man. We need to do a podcast about the aviation, like how you got your love for aviation, how I got my love for aviation, what's like where you are, what's like, especially okay. like people who are doing aviation outside of Uganda, like both of us are outside of the country. So how does that look like? How does it look like for people who want to do aviation back in Uganda? So that's the whole point. That's what we're going to be talking about Um it's just okay. op- it's an open conversation and that's how i've been driving this podcast just like to just have open conversation whatever it leads us to but I, at least we have a goal what we want to talk about okay. be- yeah before before we talk into all that like i just want to know uh-huh. i already mentioned like you know isaac and that's how we got connected but where did you uh, grow yeah, up in yeah. uganda and what's what's your name like the full name well, my my full name is Ryan Kawesa, yeah, and uh, well, I was born in Kayunga. I don't know if you've heard of this place. Kayunga in towards Ginger or Kayunga towards Wakiso? Because I grew up in Wakiso and we have a Kayunga on the Hoima Road. Yeah, leave, leave the Kayunga that's like <laughs> there. Kayunga towards Ginger, after Mukono. Okay. So that's where I was, uh, I was born and uh, my earlier days were there. Then slightly later on in life to Kawempe, but initially I was I was born in in Kayunga, and that's where I started my early days. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I have friends. I have a friend that grew up in Kayunga. Actually, we went there to see her grand her grandparents. We went. She was a, a a young girl that lived with us at home, so we wanted to go there to see her parents. So we drove to Kayunga. So I've been to Kayunga. Yeah. I don't know if I've been to where you. The part you you grew well, up Kayunga town Kayunga town so that's, what we, we how we went there was, was like when you when you're just entering ginger like before the bridge i think 
you take a lift on that the road somewhere you take a lift it's i think it's opposite nile is it what factory no, is that no, 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 no. that's 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 so far the, the, the thing is uh-huh. you can use so many sites to get into kayunga okay there's where you just go through gayaza and mm-hmm. that's like oh one hour from kampala then there's through mukono mm-hmm. mukono and then there's through jinja after the bridge okay so but you the... probably went through Ginger. Yeah, that's that's the longest one because there's a lot of traffic when you're going through Mokono yeah. Jinja. There's a lot of traffic on that road. But then, guys, is the best option because there's rarely any traffic. Yeah, yeah. So, wait, uh, did you go to school in Kayunga or when after you moved no, to Kayunga? Okay, that, that's it. Actually, I, I growing up, I spent most of my life in in boarding school. I think since P1. Oh wow! So yeah, I went to boarding school in Mokono in Seta. So hmm. that's where I spent most of my early days. Okay. Really. So How I never went. School? I never studied in Kayunga. Okay. And uh, high school, I went to Chivuli. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For all and, six uh, years? No, no, actually. I went to Chivuli for about four years or level. Mm-hmm. And then I left. Then one year later, no, soon, right after our level, I, I left. I left Uganda. Okay. So. I completed high school here and uh, I got into preparatory engineering school. Mm-hmm. And another year there, after that, I got into the university. Okay. That's, that's yeah. pretty cool. Uh, so after senior four, that's when you moved out of Uganda. Yeah. Okay. I left where I was uh, in 2015, I think. Mm-hmm. That's when uh, me and Isaac would finish our senior four. So okay. uh, right after that, I left Uganda. So I was about 17 years old. Was there any reason why you decided to leave Uganda? Was it because of school? What was the reason like you were like, oh, I need to get out of the country? <laughs> well, I was 17. I, I absolutely had no no intentions of leaving Uganda. But okay. <laughs> I have a bigger brother. Okay. And uh, my bigger brother, he, he lived in Botswana. Mm-hmm. He lives in Botswana. He was a doctor right there. So he met someone like a friend of his who had been to Russia and uh, had studied here before. And he was like, in Uganda, you have, I, well, when we sat for our O-level exams, yeah? Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, I didn't really perform poorly because I got a first grade. Okay. I think I got around, I think I got around 31. Okay. And that's almost like the card of the, was end, Yeah. I think I was so, I was there too. Uh, no, I think I was like yeah. 30, yeah, so something like that. 30, yeah, 20, I, I don't I remember. 31. Okay. So when I was going back to Chivuli, I was actually going back to Chivuli and uh, everything had been finalized. And in Chivuli, those guys absolutely refused me to get into sciences. They mm. told me I will have to do arts. Yeah. And uh, I got a combination of history, econ, and literature. Hell. And my parents were, <laughs> you, you can't do that. You, you can't do that. So yeah. th- that's when the idea of leaving the country and going abroad to continue my studies came Okay. Up. Did you have so anybody you know? Country, but... Okay. Did you have anybody you knew outside the country that you, you wanted, to, like you're going to, or you just picked the country and just went there? No. Like, uh, I didn't know anyone. I didn't okay. know anyone that I was going to, no family, no. Mm-hmm. So, well, the, the idea came that you know, Ryan has to go out and continue his studies so yeah. that he can get into an arts school. Sorry, uh, a That's science school. school. Yeah. yeah, so they, they looked into options, different countries came up. Yeah, and uh, we were just lucky that as, as we were looking, my brother knew someone who had been here before. Mm-hmm. And he was like, it's a good idea to go over there and it's... Well, the the best schools are always in, in English speaking countries right. like the United States, like mm-hmm. England. But well, those those countries, if if you're going to foot your your bill, it's incredibly ex- expensive. And well, right. that's when that's that when Russia true. came in, and it's it's not as expensive as as yeah. over there. So we go, that we is go to, true. That is true. Like. Uh, countries like the u.s it's really expensive to leave and to yeah. go to school here live around all yeah. that like before even you come to the u.s it's hard to get the visa to come to the u.s like the visa people now, who... the funny story mm-hmm. about the russian visa i got the russian visa the day i applied for it 
Oh really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they so, they apply for it in body. Yeah. That's how easy it is. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that's the thing. Like it's it, like you said, it's easier to get um a visa, and it's also like cheaper. And this is why, like I I like bringing people Absolutely. like you. So like if somebody is gonna listen to this podcast and hear you, he has a dream to do aviation, and he hears me talk yeah. about, hey man, it's hard to get a visa and it's expensive. So if he's in that situation where he wants to do aviation. But he's thinking, then he'll hear you and he'll be like, oh, this one guy took Yeah, there's so many other ways to get right. there. So, so then, then there'll be other options. So that's that's really, yeah. really good that you shared about that. Yeah. So when yeah. you wanted to do sciences, did you specifically want to do engineering and aviation or you wanted to just be an engineer? <laughs> Growing up, I wanted to be a doctor, like my big brother. Okay. Never. Well, I already thought about... Uh, engineering, I already thought about aeroplanes, but it was big of a dream. It's mm-hmm. something I thought I can I can never achieve. Mm-hmm. Like when you tell someone you want to be a pilot, where we come from, you want to be a me- I had never had anyone who's a mechanic of like aeroplanes, never. Mm-hmm. So it, it's kind of a very big dream. So whenever you told someone, for example, pilot, it's, it's the easy thing we can talk about aeroplanes. Then someone will tell you, what airplanes are you going to fly? Exactly. Our country doesn't have an airline. <laughs> so it was a very big dream, you know? Yeah. Like, so I, I, I have share... never thought about getting mm-hmm. into aviation, ever. Mm-hmm. Until I got onto my journey when I came to Russia. Okay. So that's when uh, I got to know that, what? Well, let's let's get into aviation after. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah I'm going to ask you about that later, but I was just, I'm just going to visit back where you talked about the dream, like having the dream back in Uganda. Yeah. The funny thing is, for me, I had the dream because I had had yeah. a, like, I, I loved airplanes, like I loved airplanes. Yeah. And every time somebody was flying, I cried to my dad to go to Antebe to just even look at those airplanes that were yeah, on the yeah, floor well, as well, you well, drive there. Like you, you yeah. want to go there and just look at it even though I'd never been in one, like I'd never stepped my foot in one, but I just loved to just look at it. So, but you, remi- you reminded me back in my high senior six, the teacher was asking us, what do you all want to do when you there? I was like, I want to, actually at that time I wanted to, I was saying, I want to be a pilot. Like I want to fly. I, but I just wanted anything to do with airplane. Actually at one time I thought about being like a flight attendant too, like anything about the airplane. <laughs> Like, that's all I want. Yeah. But like you mentioned, it was big of a dream that my friends didn't even yeah. believe that I can do that, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, you can't so, yeah. tell when you want to walk with aeroplanes in Uganda. It's a very big dream. Mm-hmm. You could probably walk a whole, like, what can I say, county yeah. and uh, not find a single person that does aviation. It's mm-hmm. a very big dream. Right. Very, very big. There's so, actually quite a few now people that have started doing aviation. Yeah, and, um, it's just it's just new since maybe we have an airline and right. people are kind of trying to get into it. Yeah. But before, absolutely not. When I finished so senior six, I thought of going to Soroti, but then my I had Science my uncle who was yeah my uncle was yeah. telling me like if you if you do at Soroti like there isn't really many opportunities you're gonna get like you're gonna die with your dream you know like. You could still, like many people, our brothers and sisters back in Uganda have gone to Makaya, they've got like their degrees, but then you end up like, I have some of my friends who got their degrees at Makaya, but then they're now like driving taxis or driving this. So you yeah, could, yeah. you could go to school, you could study, but like, what are you going to do after you get the degree? Like you could go bust your, bust your ass at Soroti and just learn everything. But once you get your license, then what's going to happen next? Like nothing you're gonna just nice. sit with your life so that was a good another good idea that i point out like doing these outside the country at least it opens you to different yeah. opportunities it gives you an age like yeah. even if you you would want to return back to uganda it gives you an age mm-hmm. from plus, plus even even option, the uganda- also me like uh-huh. so roti was also an option but we never f- like followed through right my other uh-huh. option was south africa but um uh-huh. So when we con- like when we looked at through all my uncle had been to the US, that's why I ended up picking the US. Mm-hmm. So he kind of helped me and guided me through all that and just walked through. But yeah, the, the school is expensive, the visa is expensive. But anyway, yeah. I'm gonna go back to where we're at. So you get to you get to Russia. And is that fine if we use the, the word Russia in the inter- I don't want to cause any problems with you or anything? <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. It's fine. So like when you get there. 
what are the any culture shocks that you had when moving from getting from Uganda getting to Russia like what are some of the well, things you well do? well even even before coming to Russia when when I was told well you're going to Russia I was like well Russia like the the only picture I had about Russia was the Hollywood picture what we always watched in movies <laughs> I was like it's probably a lot of gangsters it's very <laughs> cold that's all I knew and uh when I finally came to Russia, actually, I did fly alone. I was a 17-year-old kid, wow. first time traveling, and I mm. came to Russia. Wow. And uh, when I go to, I go to a city called Ufa. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, I think, southeast from okay. Moscow. Okay. Yeah. So I got here, and uh, it was September, I think, around September 8th, like early time of uh, autumn, fall, yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, normally, right now, like I'm used to this weather, I think it's it's not cold at all. Yeah. But that particular day, my brother, <laughs> <laughs> I was, I it was very, 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 very cold. I had yeah. never been this cold in my life. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. And uh, when I was coming, my parents were saying, "You're going to Russia." Like everyone knows, Russia is cold. Mm -hmm. So they gave me those big. You know, Asan Wenger kind of jackets. Those big <laughs> ones. Those big you ones. had to bring so, Asan Wenger. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. They got me one big one like that. So when I came here and it was so cold, I put mm -hmm. it on. Mm -hmm. So when, when we went through it, like uh, immigration and everything, and I had to leave the airport, yeah. when I got outside, these guys were literally in shorts and vests <laughs> and. and uh, you know, and yeah. I was in a big Asan Wenger kind of jacket, bro. <laughs> that is, I was like, that how did this guy survive? I was like, I can't live here even for mm -hmm. one day. It was so cold, bro. Very cold. It was just autumn, fall. Yeah. And it's no. so cold for me. But that right is now, funny. I'm that is funny quit. because um, yeah. the people back in Uganda too, like they talk about, like recently, I don't know if you've been talking to anybody in Uganda in the last few weeks or because they be yeah, like, oh my gosh, it's raining, it's, it's so cold. cold. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. you guys don't know what cold is. Like, don't you know need, what you're looking about. You need, to, you need to step out and come out to these countries. It's like freezing cold, and especially, yeah, like in one the winter, days, it's another story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. One of those days where they were talking about the cold, like it being so cold, I was like, let me real check my weather. And uh, here, it was even, it was 13, I think. Yeah. It was late in the night. It was 13 degrees. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, it wasn't so cold because my window was open. Yeah. My fan was, was on. And it's 13 degrees. And when I checked Uganda, I checked Kampala, mm -hmm. it was about 28. <laughs> what are these guys talking about? <laughs> How can you say it's so cold at 28? Yeah. It, we, use, so, we use Fahrenheit here and it goes yeah, to like I, negative. I negative Fahrenheit. So if it's like negative, it's like negative, negative in like Celsius in Uganda. So yeah, it gets, it gets really cold. But anyway, yeah. So you get to the, one of the things you, you were talking about was the weather. Um, what's the other uh, thing that... The weather and uh, how no one knew English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my first day came here and uh, even at the airport with the immigration guys, Mm -hmm. Absolutely no one knew English. So how do you find your way communicating to them about it? I mean, they can speak like maybe broken, is it? At the immigration on that particular day, mm -hmm. there wasn't even a single person who could speak any broken English. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, when I was coming, I traveled with a guy from Egypt. Okay. So he helped me go through immigration because I think he had been home for holidays and he was returning back. Mm -hmm. to russia so he knew a little bit yeah. a bit, little bit of russian so he helped me go through immigration and uh when i was coming here um, they are they, they literally have the university has to send someone to come mm -hmm. and pick you up and uh russia this russian and this english okay on the website on the website this english everything is written in english mm -hmm. yeah so um what can i say like when i was coming i got the numbers of the website they, they right. gave me a number this is the person you're supposed to call when you get you get at the airport this is the address i wrote all these things in english like uh -huh. they sent them to me 
Mm-hmm. And, uh, when I got through immigration, I went out in my big heavy jacket. <laughs> As a no longer jacket. I wait, <laughs> yeah, I waited for the guy that was supposed to take me. The guy, I wasn't seeing anyone there for me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then, the, you know, those buses that come by the airport and take people into the city. Mm-hmm. So I went to one. I, I showed this guy my address and uh, I had money, but it was in dollars. Okay, so dollars. Was it US dollars? dollars? Yeah, US dollars. Okay. And uh, I, I didn't know where I can go and exchange this money. Mm-hmm. So anyway, the first thing I gave this guy my address. And the place I wanted to go to, but it was written in English. Yeah. This guy couldn't read a thing. He just looked at me, looked at the paper, and he did like this. He shook his hands. He's like, he we don't we absolutely don't understand each other. Then he gave me back my paper and I went and sat there. <laughs> <laughs> so language was was mm-hmm. the biggest thing. Language yeah. barrier and and the coldness and the weather. I could imagine, like I myself had yeah. my my own struggles coming to the United States. Like I've I've talked about my story, my journey, yeah. but that wasn't English. English uh, wasn't really the problem. It was just life and like how to deal with these countries, like how they do their things and all that. But I can't imagine being in a country where you can't communicate in English. That would be the most frustrating thing in my entire Look. life because. Mm-hmm. Not not just even not co- communicating in, in their language. I even did know how to read the alphabet. I was <laughs> green. I couldn't read. Yeah. So like, I, I couldn't read nothing. Everything I learned here. Yeah. Before I didn't know it. I didn't know anything. Sorry. Like every so, little thing I learned here. So in the US, I was gonna say like because we have a strong accent back from Uganda, like our British English and our accent uh where yeah. is where is the food like you you speak it like that and somebody's <laughs> like what what what, what did you say, say? what say <laughs> and that that frustrates me when someone you say something in your accent and they're like they can't hear you and you're freaking speaking english like i'm speaking english why do how don't you understand and it frustrates you all the time so now i can't even imagine when you can't even speak the word speak the language yeah have you learned how uh, to speak yeah. it now Oh, absolutely. I'm, oh, so good. Let, let, yeah, I'm not let's... very good, okay. but when I do speak it, someone does understand what I'm saying. All right, speak a next line in, in your Russian. Like, um, what do you want to hear? Huh? Yeah, I want to say, like, say, I when I when I get to I, when I got to Russia, I said doing aviation, just say that line. No, oh, I didn't even pick a. <laughs> I can't even say the first word you say. But yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. That's pretty cool, though. Like, you add another language to your language. And like yeah. that's, that's a skill. And that increases your opportunities. Like, imagine if you, like, you graduate or now, like, you're doing your intern and you want to go to the United States and they want somebody who can speak a different language. That's there, another thing that you... Well, have. not Russian anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. So anyway, so you go to to Russia and you joined their high school. Yeah. How was how was their high school system like? How was it different from Uganda? Well, it's like anywhere in Europe and America, they do eleven grades, I think. Yeah. Okay. So it wasn't as much because I wasn't there for long. Okay. Then, how 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 many classes did you have to because you left Uganda and you're all over you had to do senior five and senior six so how long did you still have in high school to go to university just one just one one One. yeah just one that's a good thing about the Ugandan system because when I came to the US two after my form six it was considered as two years of undergraduate so I didn't really have like a long time in college too like we it was like it was considered a lot when they exchange it. So just one, and then, um, and then a preparatory mm-hmm. course, and then in twenty seventeen, yeah, then twenty seventeen later on into the university. Okay, and at that time you That's knew a- you want you wanted you wanted to just go do yeah. aviation. Okay. Yeah. Now by then I knew what I wanted, and I wanted to do aviation. Mm-hmm. So how but was anyway, that like in university? Mm-hmm. I was influenced by my brother too. He was like, well, you can do aviation. 
And then when I looked into it, I was like, yeah, I think I can do aviation. Yeah. It's funny yeah. because people just, think think like that, that you can't do it because they think it's hard. I mean, it's hard, but once you're determined yeah. to do whatever it takes, you can do it, you know? Like I had people too in the US tell me, oh, it's hard. It will be hard for you. You're from Uganda, third world country. Like we didn't even have yeah. airplanes at that time, but it's not hard once well, you know what you want. The fuck for me and aviation, I think we just fell in love, like gradually yeah. the process. I just learned how to love aviation. It wasn't like like you who liked it when you were younger. Right. Yeah, it just usually, when I was young, it just surprised me how something so big can fly. But mm -hmm. but loving it, I just, it was something I just fell in love with. Like I knew I wanted aviation, but I wanted to fly. When I went to the flight school, I realized that there's like airplane mechanics, like people who fix airplanes, like that's so cool. Cause they told us like how to fix airplanes and all. Like I wanted to fly and I flew. But con comparing the two, I feel like I'm so much in love with ma maintenance than flying. Like, I just want to yeah. be able to build this thing. Like, right now, it makes me feel, like, really good when I look at the plane flying. I'm like, I fixed the engine of the plane. It's now flying and, like, everything I did that. It must, so, be so, it must give you a lot of pleasure. Bro. Yeah, that's, like, a great accomplishment. So I switched my desires when I was in the uh flight school i was like you know what i want to be a mechanic so i still flew i didn't never got to finish my license to get a license to to fly and all that because it was expensive too and i was paying all that's my school and i was like you know what i'm a mechanic now i can get a job so that's nice so yeah um, i got into university yeah and uh us we we study for about in 2018 we study for about uh Four and a half years bachelor's. What was your degree that you were studying? Aeronautical well, engineering. Studied, no, well, there's there's aeronautical engineering, and then there is uh there are people who do aeronautical engineering, but mm -hmm. I do under aeronautical engineering. I do aircraft and engine maintenance. Okay, that's how they call it here. Is that after but in that? Russia, they call it something else. They call it technical. I think maintenance of yeah. Of engines, something like yeah, that. Yeah, and in America, they call it, uh, so we're M M A M T, aircraft yeah. maintenance technician. Like, that's, yeah, that's sure. what, yeah, that's what they call it. Oh, like, air from and power plant mechanics. So, like, that's the certification. But, um, yeah, ours didn't take long. It was, like, two years or something like that. And then, really? you go out, yeah, and then you go out and, there are schools that will take you four years, but ours was, like, a a special it wasn't like a university it was just a flight school like that's all we do aviation Security. so and we well, didn't even because us here we first, we <laughs> first got into theory for about yeah. the first and second year like practically about aviation it was third year fourth year okay. but yeah, so that, our school <laughs> we do a lot of we do like theory but like it's compressed like you do th a lot of things in like one year we don't have breaks we only have Christmas and this Thanksgiving and only like 4th of July. So the rest of that, yeah. you're in school, like from 7 a.m. to like 4 p.m., like every day. Oh, wow, that's a lot. Just studying, yeah. That's how, that's how I liked it because you finished quick. So yeah, how was your university? Like, how did you find the courses and whatever you're studying? And was was it worthy? Like, how, how was it like? So initially, when I came here, I was supposed to study in English, okay? Okay. That was the plan. So when I got here and uh, I was told after my preparatory course, I was told uh, if you want to join uh, uh, this this course, like uh, the course I told you, I'm doing aircraft maintenance, mm -hmm. engine, engine maintenance and so on. They told me the English, like we were so few, we were about two people that year who wanted to study it in English, me and a Nigerian friend of mine. And uh, and we were so few and they were like, we can only two, teach two people, okay? Mm -hmm. and they were like, uh, if you want to study in English, you will probably have to wait for the next academic year when more students come in and you will be a bigger kind of group. And they said, uh, if you can't wait, well, you can study in, in Russia. Yeah. Well, I talked to my parents during my preparatory course. 
uh, I studied Russian, that's where I studied alphabets, blah, blah, and so on and so on. So by then, I could read and write Russian. How long did it take you to to learn the alphabet? A week. Okay. It it wasn't very long. Yeah. Yeah. In a month, I could read and write. Okay. In a month. That's that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's the good thing about learning a language when you're an adult. Yeah. Like, it's easy. It's not like... Like when you're a baby, you need to learn how to to use a pen. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. So in a month, I could read and write. Yeah. So they told me if if you can't wait one more year for more foreign students to come and you study, you can join the Russian people who study in Russian. Well, like I asked my parents and they were like, well, it's okay. When we were there, we were working on, on engines uh, yeah. and we were working on the airframe too. Yeah. And inside and everything. We yeah. were just working on everything. No, like, I mean, you yourself, what do you like the most? Like, you, when you work, I mean, you, you oh. can work on everything, but you, what's your favorite? Like, what do you say? Oh, oh I like this part of the my, airplane. My favorite, work. I think, is, is the power plant. I like, I love yeah. the Yeah. That's, uh, that's how I nice. am too. Like, I, my yeah. current job, I, I came in, I was, I mean, we all do everything. We do pretty much anything. Like, some days there'll yeah. be, working on some other stuff and then engines but i love the engines a lot like that's that's some of one of the things that i really like uh, just disassembling i worked in a engine overhaul before i think i think we were friends before then when i was at Kalita, when we worked at the yeah I saw it when you were at Kalita. yes i did yeah. see it on those big uh Pratt and whitney's yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i worked yeah. on the big i Pratt remember Whitney's. This I remember that. Now I work on the smaller ones, the PT sixes for the yeah. like King Airs yeah. and Pluses, yeah, which yeah. I love so, those too. Uh, they're pretty cool. And I don't really want to keep you like for so for very long because I kind of just shared this because I wanted us to share our experiences on how we ended up in aviation and why we like aviation. For any kids out there, any kids back in Uganda who listen to this podcast and they want a dream to to do aviation. Um, but yeah, so for my experience, like, I feel like aviation is something cool and people have a perception, like we already talked about the a perception of like, it's hard. We can't do it because we're a third world country, which I don't think so. I feel like anybody can do it. You just have to set your minds right. And if it's something you like, if it's something you yeah. want to do, because like from you talking about it, you, you use the specific word. I fell in love with aviation and I, I say, I love aviation. It's something that you go love. It's going to have to come from your heart to do it. And that's how yeah, you're only going to yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, of course you, you can't just do something just cause you want, you have to do it. Mm-hmm. You have to do something that you really love and, and enjoy doing. And I, I also believe like it's, it's very okay for someone not to, I don't know. It will look, it will sound stupid, but I think it's very okay for someone to reach a certain age and they absolutely don't know what they're going to do in the future. Yeah. Because I was 16, I was 17, and I, I absolutely had no idea of what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Like, I would say, a year ago, I want to be a doctor. Next time, when I fail my my biology, I would say <laughs> I want to be a lawyer now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I had those moments. I only got too. to know what I really want to do mm-hmm. when when I was really getting close to university and I thought of my 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 options and what could really I could really get into. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was aviation. Yeah, uh, you made a point like it's okay for you because I went to college, like besides aviation, actually I have a bachelor's degree in cross-cultural studies which is not aviation it's just something i did yeah in in between that i went and played i I went to a college where i played soccer and i had a scholarship so Uh because i didn't have a job in the u.s so i went to there to do that but in between that i got the uh, degree but being at the college you find a lot of people that are there because every child in america has to go to the university has to go to college now because they want but that's what the society is like everybody has to go to the university and you find kids there that don't have any idea what they want to do it's just because they're there because everybody's supposed to be a university even in uganda there's so many people like 
just everywhere. People yeah. will just go to school to get that favor and then do what they really want to do mm-hmm. just for their families and so on. Yeah. Yeah. So when you finish your but, uh, de- when you finish your degree, what what what's the next mm-hmm. for you? What's next? What do you want to do with that? <sighs> Bro. The fact is, um, before you get there, you always have, you think you have it figured out, mm-hmm. yeah? But now when you are, you're getting there, that's when even other ideas start coming up in your head and mm-hmm. you, you start rethinking what you really want to do. Well, the first option would be staying here yeah. and, uh, and continue working with... Uh, with with uh, with TS technique where we were interning mm-hmm. and trying to find something else maybe not here in Ufa maybe mm-hmm. the bigger cities like Moscow mm-hmm. uh, Saint Petersburg that will be the the, uh, the very first step yeah but it, but if not I would really I would really like to go into some some other country English speaking country mm-hmm. maybe the UK maybe the US yeah. And uh, because of what's really happening right now, Ukraine, Russia, it's uh, it's kind of tough, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it makes it tough for the people who are there. Actually, yeah. I was going to ask you about that. I didn't know if if it's something I can talk about, but like, it's how how has okay. that made your life? How has that in- affected your life? Having that going on between the country where you live and how has that <laughs> affected you? I mean, I think for you, you're on the other side of not well, so much affected than the people who are in Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of, of course, because in Russia, there's absolutely nothing happening. Okay. And oh, people people live their lives. Yeah. And, um, well, according to me, as a foreign student here, it's, well, it has affected me in a way that, uh, like, I'm a paying student. I'm not in a scholarship or anything. So things like transactioning of money from home, tuition, basically, mm-hmm. uh, it's kind of hard, uh, like to because things like MoneyGram, Western mm-hmm. Union, things like that don't work anymore. And uh, the Swift, they, you know, the they Swift, are, they think like there's somebody's funding or something like that. Is that? Yeah, mm-hmm. Swift, the the Swift bank bank to bank kind of system also doesn't work anymore. Maybe from specific countries and specific banks. Yeah, but from Uganda, there's absolutely nothing that works. So for me, well, other things, I don't need a lot from home. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes I really need because I'm a paying student. I will, mm-hmm. I would really need some some tuition sometimes when I, I can't do it myself, and it's 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 kind of difficult for me to do that anymore. Yeah, when yeah. was the last time you were in Uganda? Well, the last time I was in Uganda was uh was 2020 february oh nice before, After, COVID. Co- before covid oh wow yeah yeah i was so lucky that um i left uganda i think in february after valentine's day mm-hmm. and uh two weeks later i think march first march like it really broke out and, yeah and people weren't allowed to fly mm-hmm. so when i got here i was like thank god that i came back here before the Everything went on lockdown. Yeah, I so just left you kind of in January. Two weeks before lockdown. I came back January 2020. That's when I came back to it. Because I went there 2019, December. So I stayed through the last yeah, week. I also went I also went November twenty yeah, November twenty nineteen and I left February in February. Oh nice. You were there for quite a good time. Um when I go yeah, to Uganda, it's yeah. always just a short time. No, and uh, in that time, it's because I was uh, I was working for CAA, Civil Aviation Authority. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, when I was there, I spent about two months there, and I really met some people uh, in, in the field because uh, I was working with a guy called Samuel. Mm-hmm. He's like an issuing, uh, he issues licenses for people, like flying licenses and uh, aviation, basically. Anyone who wants to do anything in aviation, Mm-hmm. goes to this guy's office okay yeah so i was so how, how did you get that intern there to work with them oh well, you know our country you have to know someone that knows yeah someone. yeah that's true <laughs> yeah so uh, i got to know someone and uh this someone knew someone who got me something 
Mm-hmm. So what did you yeah. what did they, what did they have you do when you were at CAA? Well, for a person like me who wants who wants to be a technician, mm-hmm. they were wasting my talents there. I would think, <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, manuals like f- f- mm, like with all the the aircraft registered in the country. Mm-hmm. So all their main manuals, their main main documents, their documentation mm-hmm. is stored with this guy. Yeah. So this guy always had me looking through this documentation to see what is what. Mm-hmm. All those uh, CRJs, all those small small aircrafts. By then they didn't have the airbuses yet. Yeah. Yeah. But that's that's basically what I used to do, and uh, and upload people's documents, people's licenses mm-hmm. on two years. Uh, or ESS uh, sites, websites, something like that. I actually wanted so to get my, I wanted to go in Uganda and get a CAA. I don't know how I'm going to use it, but I just wanted to have it, you know, like go take their yeah, test and just you can, get it. You can have it. And get you that. can have it. Because I'm sure yeah. because I've done my trainings and all that in Uganda, all you need is to just go take their tests and then they, they yeah. give you. Yeah, things. yeah. Because if you already have the the, the one in your country, FFA, mm-hmm. F- a, a, yeah. 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 Uh, well, someone told me you just have to, to like, they would just equivalent it. And that's yeah. all. Maybe yeah. and, uh, you just some make some things. Yeah. Pay them some money. Obviously, the money has to be there. Yeah. Uganda likes money. Like It's not a lot. It's not a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's very little money for the licenses. Yeah, and I think I need to get in with you and see because I wanted to get it. I don't know. I'm not gonna. I'm not planning on working in Uganda. I was planning on working in Uganda actually for for some time, but yeah, I'll see how I can get it. Well, that's also something I think of. Like I told you, I have so many things right now that run in my head. So I also think maybe, well, if I do get a nice job mm-hmm. in in Uganda, something that is well paying. I've been away from my family for a very long time. Yeah. I've been away from my family since I was 17. I'm I'm now 23. Oh, so, wow. so yeah. I really need to be home for some time, I, I would think. So what do you what what message do you have for a kid out there in Uganda or who wants to to do aviation? Like what's the one thing you from from you will point out to this kid? Well, just just go for it. It's 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 not it's nothing big anymore. Anyone can do it. Because some people, when you tell you tell someone anything about aeroplanes, they're like, "Wow, there's a lot of mathematics, there's a lot of chemistry, there's a lot of physics." But me myself, I was never like the best student in physics. I was never the best student in mathematics. It's, you're not supposed to be good at all those things. That's what exactly. usually scares people away from those kind of courses like engineering, being a doctor, and so on. So. You just have to go and do it. You just have to go for it if you really want it. And uh, if you really want something, well, there's no one that's going to get it to you. You have to do it. Yeah. And it's not a big dream. It's not a big dream. If someone like me who was born in Cayuga can can walk on aeroplane. That's the same. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool to just have somebody else from a similar background. Like I usually say yeah. somebody like me from Wakiso who can come uh, and like you you stated it right perfect that you don't have to be very, i wasn't the best student in my school in my high school i wasn't always yeah. the first student in in every class i wasn't the best in physics i wasn't the best in mathematics it just i, w- I had a dream and i wanted it because yeah. they say uh hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work that's hard that's true that's so you cool. don't have to be the best in, but you have to put in the effort to work hard for that. Yeah. So like if it takes you double the amount of this talented guy, what they do, if it takes you two of that, what he does to yeah. be there, you're going to have to put in the two. Yeah. So like, you you just have to have to yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like anybody can do it. Like you said, you just have to love it. Yeah. Anyone just put in the work. It. Yeah. It's not hard. And uh, anyone can do aviation at any point. Even you're never too old, you're never too young. Exactly. I also believe that. Because the people I know who have studied aviation at, at 28 and they'll be out at, at 30 something. Mm-hmm. So it's, you can do it even when you're 18. I studied yeah. it when I'm, I'm, I'm 19, I'm 18. And the people I started with who were already 
28th when they got into it. So mm -hmm. you can do it at any time. I think and, I started uh, it. I started it when I was like 22. Yeah, around that. And mm. the opportunities, the opportunities will get you. There will be opportunities mm -hmm. because well, we are developing. Uganda is developing. Everywhere is developing. So the opportunities will always be there. Yeah, they should get of that. They should get rid of that mentality that oh, we don't even have airplanes in Uganda. Why do you yeah. study aviation? Yeah, like, no. yeah. You don't even think yeah. just inside the box. Like get outside the box. Like when I finished my senior six, we didn't have airplanes, but I was just thinking outside yeah. the box. Like it doesn't have to be in Uganda. It could be anywhere else, and at least yeah, yeah. somebody has to see that happening, and they can know like oh yeah, it's possible. You just have to go for it. But anyway, I don't want to take a lot of your time. I'm going to now ask you some of my uh, signature questions that I ask yeah. everybody I host on the, the podcast. Like one of it is going to be a life lesson. What's, what's a life lesson you've learned to this point? Well, the life lesson I've learned is um, there's nothing like someone had it the easy way. Like it's, it's never there. There's no one in this world that has it easy. You just don't know their hard stories. You get it? Like sometimes you look at someone and you say, well, because this guy was born somewhere, maybe in with a good rich family, maybe he was born in another country that is quite better than where you are. And then you would say, this guy has it easy. It's never true. You just don't know his hard stories. Like everyone has their story and there's nothing easy. There's nothing easy. Everyone has something hard. Maybe at an extent, some people have it harder than others. But everyone has it hard. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is true. That is definitely true. And That's I'm what glad, I believe. I'm glad you shared like, that. No one was it easy. Everyone, everyone suffers. Everyone has their own problems. Mm -hmm. So never say this guy has it easy. He went. Mm -hmm. He had it the easy way. People look at you when you're in America, when you're in Russia. They're like, ah, this guy got there. Yamala. You know. Mm -hmm. Yamala. Like, <laughs> yeah, but Yamala. Like, really, people have like, trouble. You know. That is true. Yeah. Oh, the other one is what gets you excited about life? The future. Oh, yeah. yeah. The future and maybe family. Mm -hmm. The future and family, like, well, usually future, future is hard, but the future really gets me excited. Yeah. I think I look yeah. at it in a way that when you talk about the future, the way I look at it is like, I can't wait to see myself the next five years. I can't wait to see Bro, what's going like, on. Like, like for me right now, what's on my mind is I can't wait to graduate. That's yeah. all. So yeah. that, that thing keeps me up. Like it keeps me focused. It keeps me like, that's what I'm looking up to at this moment. Right. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, a... and to get better as a person, to, to go somewhere better. Yeah. Those better countries, Canada, yeah. UK. And like, actually, I'm going to go back to a statement you made a while back, opportunities, like when you were talking, when I told you to say something about the kids listening, aviation has a lot of opportunities around the world, yeah. at least almost yeah. all countries like have, and they always need people, like in the US, they always need mechanics, in, cool. like in different countries, like you will go online and look for aviation jobs anywhere, at least they'll all have like opportunities and jobs everywhere. Yeah. That's true. Like aviation jobs are always out there. Mm -hmm. So it's a big industry and they need people to do it. Yeah. So, so the final question, Mr. Ryan. Actually, did you even tell us your second? Yeah, you did. You did the second name. Your, your second name. Kawes is my Kawes, second name. Yeah. Oh, this last yeah. question. Who would you like to see on the podcast next? And um, <laughs> you're going to have to recommend somebody. And if I don't know the person, to, you're going to have to connect. I will have me. to recommend yeah and then you, you actually you will have to help me get connected to a person like if it's somebody i don't know you're gonna be the bridge between me and that person like hey i recommended you on this podcast bro well i could have someone you know alan okello alan okello is that a comedian no he's a footballer he plays for the national team yeah i think i think yeah, I think you know, his name was some familiar, but I was I think I was on the thing of another person. Yeah, uh -huh. he's he's a great friend of mine and, and Isaac. We went to the same school. 
yeah. at the point we used to play together in Chiboli because uh, I used to play football back then. You were good. So I, I knew Chiboli was, was a good score was, in football. Yeah, I was good. I was good, but my parents always loved the books more. Yeah. Than <laughs> so they taught me off it. I think yeah. that's one of the reasons they sent me abroad. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, Alan. Oh, yeah, be, that would be nice football. to have him. That would be nice to have him on the podcast. Yeah, if you can connect yeah. with him. Yeah, good. I can absolutely, and I'm sure he's willing to also share his story because yeah. he has actually made it, and uh, he started he started playing for the national team way, way, way. And we were in school, and he was already playing for those underage teams, under mm. 15s, and so on. Yeah. And currently, he's my age, and he, he's already a professional. He plays in Algeria, I think. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. So, yeah. So. Mr. Ryan, thank you very much for for sitting here with me for about an hour, uh, just talking about aviation. And I'm glad you came here to share your part of the story to just impact another child's life somewhere and for all the words you've said. It's pretty good to have somebody else to give a different perspective because I've I've talked about aviation, aviation every day, every day, every day. And but it's pretty cool to have you um share a different perspective. And if you ever know any other Ugandan, I mean I might know some. But I don't know if you ever know anybody in Uganda doing aviation, and we can find him and just. Uh, yeah. Bro, let me tell you. Like, I was really, really excited when when Isaac told me he knows someone that does this thing, <laughs> and then then when he showed me your your account, I was like, damn, this guy is really living that dream. I really. <laughs> because that's why whenever you do something and you get somewhere, I always send you something because, yeah. bro, like I, I really want to go through like. Your mm-hmm. footsteps, I would say, like that's where you wanna be, really. Yeah, right. I know oh, it's yeah. gonna it's gonna happen, and that's why I follow up with you. I check on your page all the time and see what's that's happening that's with that's you, that's and just to encourage that's you, because I mean, we've talked about how it's possible to do it. We've talked about how you can do it, but that doesn't mean it's gonna it's not gonna get challenging. Like you're gonna get challenges yeah, along the way. Like sometimes I had to take those tests to get my license, and they were hard, and they were like, man. I want to give up, but I mean, challenges like that are going to be there, but nothing is yeah. going to come easy. You're going to have to just work hard yeah. through it. Um, yeah. So, man, I know it's already late over there. I don't even know what time it is, like midnight or something. I think, I think, I think, I think it's about 2, two, two in yeah. the morning. So, yeah, I will, I will I'll let you sleep and thank you very much. I'll be looking forward for people to hearing this and learning something from this yeah bro thanks thanks for hosting me all this right man. yeah thanks man okay. any okay, other final word you... yeah uh-huh no, ah, no final words okay yes that's all right okay all right peace out Bye. Hey there, uh, my name is Bani Kibuka, the host of the Ugandan Boy Talk Show. Thanks for listening and watching my podcast. Tune in every Saturday at 11 a.m. for a new episode on the podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, follow, share, and we appreciate it. If you can, leave a feedback on our podcast, please. Thank you very much.